how would this ringtone sound like in the hands of classical composers? So I went ahead and took my best educated guess on how these five famous classical composers may have used this theme to create music in their styles. This episode is part of my creative residency at the Elb Philharmonie Concert Hall in Hamburg, Germany. The full longer version of these variations is available on their channel without commentary. The musicians featured are members of the Ensemble Resonance, the resident string orchestra at the Elb Philharmonie. They're known for performing an extreme range of styles, everything from Mozart symphonies to experimental music that is being written by today's living composers. For each variation, I asked the musicians to rate it from a scale of 1 to 10. 1. I don't know. <laughs> and they gave me such brutally honest answers. I found it strange. Which also happened to be jam-packed with such valuable insights about classical music in general. For this first variation, I thought of the Baroque period, especially Johann Sebastian Bach. This one is really tricky because I can't imagine anybody in the Baroque period actually writing something with those notes exactly. So we're going to change it to something like this and add a little intro so that we establish the key beforehand. As you're hearing the variations, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And now let's hear what the musicians have to say about this one. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll, we'll go one by one. I was actually quite surprised at how different everyone's ratings were. How, how would you? Uh, uh, there's no six. Six. Eight. And I feel that I'm right in the middle of an oratorio like Matteo's Passion. Seven. It's a clear four to me. <laughs> because I can't even recognize it. I wrote this next variation with the classical period in mind, thinking mostly of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. For this one, I changed the beat of the melody slightly so that instead of it going like so, it has more of a triplet feel. I was thinking of a lot of character shifts for this one, where there are playful bits as well as some more dramatic moments. Now let's listen to what the musicians rated. Oh, for me it fits very well to Mozart. So I would say now eight. Mm, six to seven because um, I miss a little bit this, um, for me it's not too opera style. It's a little bit um, polite, too polite. I rated an eight. You uh, found a nice way to use different meters uh, in this music and to kind of distract us a bit from the theme and then we still, it's still very obvious. I'm again seven, <laughs> but I like it, I like it. I miss Mozart, but I am a little bit like Gregor, mm. it's a little bit polite. For this next variation, I was thinking of the early romantic period and thinking of Franz Schubert. I chose to have this one in three as well, but here, I'm adding a hemiola, where groups of three suddenly turn into groups of two. There's an elegance to Schubert's music with very lyrical lines, and I was trying to capture that along with these sort of gentle, court-like dotted rhythms.
actually really surprised at what the musicians had to say about this one. I would give a seven. I give it nine because really yeah. I feel the this world is very lovely on one hand and on the other hand it's um, crashing everything. Thank you. <laughs> one. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, you can give minus points too. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very well written, so I give it a six because I, I'm not a good composer. That's a very politically <laughs> <laughs> careful answer. Well, um, this grew with me. So um, you get 8.5. I found it strange at the beginning, I have to say, but I happen to like it like more and more. I wrote this next variation with the post-romantic period in mind, especially in France. I was thinking of Maurice Ravel. For this one, the inspiration couldn't be more direct because Ravel only left us one string quartet. For Ravel's music, I think of a lot of muted colors and I was thinking of the pizzicato that he has in his string quartet as well as his tremolos. Eight, I like it very much. What can I say? It's really should be a eight or a nine, but I go for seven because for me it's too, a little bit too short. I li I love the the nice beginning because you augmented the theme. Could be a coming again in the in the end some more or longer. I thought of tango for this next variation, specifically Astor Piazzolla. We're back to 4-4 four, four time with this one. By the way, if you're interested in learning more about these composers and their styles, I covered each one on my channel already in a fuller, more in-depth video. So make sure you look for those. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. That is the main tango rhythm that I'm using throughout the variation. And to add more of a piazzola flair, I'm making sure that the string players are in dialogue with each other and at key moments, I am adding in some dissonance to add a little more grit. Wow, it's nine. Oh, it's Piazzolla straightforward. I like it. Also for me, it's a nine. It's I think it's actually the iPhone ringtone was probably written by Piazzolla. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Also a nine. Yeah, and a, a ten would um, come from more of this the, the Licha style, mm -hmm. and we should put it in. Yes, also nine. Whoa. Maybe 10, I don't know, because I, I like that the, the ringtone, which is really not a um, very sexy ringtone, it, it <laughs> is getting sexy now. <laughs> Make sure you check out the full performance on Elf Philomone's YouTube channel, where I also am including a special variation at the end that is my personal take on this ringtone. I hope you enjoyed this experiment. Thank you again to the Elf Philomone, to Ensemble Resonance, 
to my patrons on Patreon and for you all for watching and subscribing. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.